from Utah's first TV station, ABC4 News celebrates 75 years. Hello, I'm Sarah Murphy. Thanks for joining us here for ABC4 News at 5. We begin tonight with news near Parley's Canyon. Utah Highway Patrol and the Division of Wildlife Resources were busy this morning moving a herd of elk from a country club. That's where we find ABC4's Annika Johns, who spoke to officials about the process of moving the elk and the reason they were down there in the first place. Annika? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. DWR and UHP say that approximately 80 to 120 elk made their way down to, uh, from Parley's Canyon to the Country Club uh, area earlier this winter. In an effort to move them back up the mountain, the two departments joined together to push the elk out of the Country Club and away from the roads. Sections of I-80, East Canyon, Parley's Way, and Foothill Drive were closed this morning to allow the elk to cross safely. Officials say that the reason the elk moved down in the first place was because of storms and snowfall we've been seeing all winter. I mean, they were hungry, the snow was deep, it was cold. This rivals some of those really serious winters in the past, and uh, they came down for survival, and uh, we're grateful that we could get them back up. Now let's just hope they stay. Officials continued saying they plan to keep an eye on the area just in case the elk come back, but if they do, they plan to just move them back up the mountain. But hey, who can blame them if they want to continue living a joyous winter life at the Country Club? Reporting live from the mouth of Parley's Canyon, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. A Utah man is dead after he was shot by police during a shootout in Springville early this morning. Just before 5 a.m., officers responded to the area of 1500 West, 150 North, after multiple callers reported hearing gunshots. Once arriving at the scene, officers searched the area for about an hour, but they say they couldn't find anything. Now, during the search, one of the officers reportedly came upon a traffic accident in the area. Police say the officer got out of his patrol car to check on the condition of those involved when a man opened fire at the officer, a second officer also arriving on scene. Quite an exchange of gunfire between all three of them. One of our officers was hit in the leg. It's non-life threatening. He was transported to a local hospital to be treated. Uh, we do expect him to make a full recovery and not have any lasting issues is our hope. He continued to say the suspect was hit during the exchange and aid was rendered. However, the man was pronounced dead on the scene. The investigation is ongoing and the motive is still unknown. Now, this followed a police shooting late Friday night that's left a man in his 30s in critical condition. That shooting happened in a neighborhood near 44th South and 22nd West between Salt Lake Community College's Redwood Road campus and Taylorsville Elementary. Taylorsville police reported that the homeowner called 911 and was the only other individual at home during the incident. When officers arrived on scene and located the man, Boren, he threatened police with a pair of scissors and a large Bowie-type knife. There was a male that was inside a home having some type of a mental episode and was also suicidal. He was armed with a knife. Uh, he was inside the house. He was destroying property and he was also um, causing some self-inflicted wounds to himself. Taylorsville police said that a number of less lethal tools were used prior to shots being fired. Now at this time, they don't know how many rounds were fired. The man was taken to the hospital where he continues to remain in critical condition. Taking a look now at Rock Falls in Carbon County. Now, rocks frequently falling in Nine Mile Canyon. According to the Carbon County Sheriff's Office, authorities are warning the public of rocks falling in the canyon, reportedly due to the seasonal freeze-thaw cycle that happens this time of year. The Carbon County Roads Department has reportedly also plowed rocks off the road with snowfall on two occasions just within the last week. Also saying in part, Please be aware of this danger and share with anyone you know that will be traveling in Nine Mile. Checking in with meteorologist Nate Larson for your pinpoint weather forecast. Speaking of rock falls and crazy weather, what is it looking like over the next two days, Nate? Uh, showers, lots of rainfall, even snow in the higher Ooh. elevations, uh, Sarah. So we do have quite a bit of wet weather moving in. Let's take a look at St. George right now. Uh, this is a look at current conditions. You can see some of the wet weather on the camera lens. We've had some rain, a few hundredths of an inch being reported in and around St. George. Still just a trace at the St. George Airport. But you can see the cloudy skies. And yeah, we've got showers that are pushing through. This is along the warm front, so it's been 
coming in out of the southwest. 47 degrees is the current temperature in St. George. North northeast winds at nine miles an hour. We'll plan on uh, rain showers throughout much of the evening. Scattered showers overnight. Look at Storm Tracker right now. You can see fairly widespread coverage across the southwest corner of the state, just as models had predicted yesterday. Mountain seeing some snow. We uh, cruise up north. We're starting to see a little bit of moisture across central uh, portions of Utah out west of uh, the Salt Lake Valley. We're going to continue to see that moisture surge northward, and we have a chance of moisture coming in. You can see it pushing in with that south flow. Winds are really whipping with the colonial flag uh, at the studio. 55 degrees right now. South winds at 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about timing when we expect to see rain in our neck of the woods. Details on that coming up, sir. March is Red Cross month and workers are continuing to speak out about the high need for blood donations. Today, ABC4 News learned more about one religious group who's working to do their part here in Utah and in cities across the world. Standing side by side, volunteers showed up at the World Mission Society Church of God in West Valley to serve. We're a church that's devoted to community service. The Church of God partnered with the Red Cross for an annual blood drive. For church members, they say their desire to help stems from their religion. The reason why the Church of God holds this on an annual basis is in preparation for the Passover. We like to do our part to help save lives by donating one pint of blood and that can in turn save up to three adult lives. And this blood drive isn't just in Utah. All Church of God locations across the world are doing their part. There are so many people that are doing that at the same time in multiple cities around the world that it makes it even, even I would say, a bigger deal than just the actual units of blood that we're able to collect here. That help, the Red Cross says, can go a long way. Just what they did at the drive there today at the Church of God, that's going to affect upwards of 150 different people. A Sunday of service mixed with celebration with the goal to help others. Right now, Red Cross workers are stressing the need for blood donations, saying extreme weather like flooding can lead to blood drive cancellations, putting them at even a higher need. To find out more information, you can head to our website, abc4.com. And in developing news, the bomb squad is investigating reports of a mysterious boom in Draper early Saturday morning. Draper City reports a sound echoed across Salt Lake County around 1 a.m. Police reportedly sped to the scene but found nothing out of the ordinary at first. Bluffdale resident Connor Jorgensen sent us photos and video today of the explosion site. You can see the crater it created as well as debris and that helicopter circling the area. And Draper man Ian Gillespie explaining his experience when he woke up to the boom. Notice a large flash go off, which was is atypical. I've lived in the neighborhood for a few years. And after I saw the flash, I got out of bed and looked up the hill and then heard a boom. Ian Gillespie says he noticed a smoke plume in the air shortly after and that this event left him and his neighbors feeling unsettled. City officials have confirmed the explosion was not related to any Geneva rock mine or Rocky Mountain power operations. Draper City says there's no threat to the public, but do ask people stay out of the area. Coming up here on ABC4 News, new details today in the turmoil seen in the banking industry. More on the fallout from the recent failures. All right, and we've got a live look. This is from Deer Valley. Yeah, clouds are increasing across the north. Winds are whipping as well. We've got quite a bit of moisture in store, not just tonight, but throughout the week. Break down the full forecast uh, coming up after the break.